In May 2005, forecasters at the National Hurricane Center predict an above-average hurricane season. They have no idea it will be extraordinary. That's one thing, if you have a lot of hurricanes and a lot of storms, if it, they're over the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you know, that's one thing. But uh, these, uh, this year, we've had so many landfalls and you know, just tremendous uh, impacts on the land areas. The season gets off to an early start, with its fourth named storm forming in July. It begins as an innocuous depression in the Caribbean on July 4th. But by the next day, it explodes into Hurricane Dennis. In no time, it's a Category 4 storm, packing winds of 150 miles an hour. 44 people are killed when Dennis first makes landfall in Haiti. Then it slams into Cuba, leaving another 16 dead and more than a billion dollars in damage. Dennis lost his eye over Cuba, then quickly regained it, and it was very interesting to watch how rapidly the storm deepened when it came off that landmass. I think that the rates of deepening for the storm were just absolutely phenomenal for several hours as this new Y redeveloped. Strong winds have already spread on the coast. The National Hurricane Center makes no effort to hide forecasters' amazement. An official advisory on July 10th states that Dennis had intensified at a rate that bordered on insane. The states of Florida, Mississippi, and Alabama brace for impact, unsure of what Dennis has in store. In the warm waters of the Gulf, Dennis strengthens back to Category 3 status. It makes landfall in the Florida Panhandle. Another 10 people are killed. Damage tops $2 billion. As bad as it is, we're actually relieved. Dennis breaks the first record of the season. It's the strongest storm ever to form before August. And it's just a taste of what the season has in store. The same day Dennis hits the U.S., Tropical Storm Emily forms in the Atlantic. It heads into the Caribbean Sea, where Dennis had passed only a week earlier. For the next few days, Emily would fluctuate wildly, keeping forecasters guessing what the storm would do next. And what it does astounds them. On July 16th, Emily intensifies rapidly to a Category 4. Hurricane Emily, the fifth named storm of the hurricane season, has again strengthened into a Category 4 storm. Probably the most intense hurricane that NASA has ever flown its aircraft over. The pilot got rocked around so badly at 70,000 feet and said, look, I'm doing two overpasses over this storm. I may have the right stuff because I'm a NASA pilot, but I'm calling it quits after this. With winds of 155 miles an hour, Emily is on the verge of a Category 5 hurricane. It quickly takes over Dennis's title as the strongest major hurricane before August. But after passing over the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula, Emily loses steam. And then once the storm actually makes landfall, it weakens very quickly since it's cut off from its energy source, which is warm ocean water. Emily wobbles its way into northern Mexico as a Category 3 before falling apart in the mountains further inland. But the storm's sudden fury leaves forecasters scratching their heads. Emily uh, was a cat, strong Cat 4, perhaps even a Cat 5. We'll have to go back and look at the data to see if it actually is the fourth Category 5 that we may have had. But the worst is yet to come. On August 23, 2005, a tropical storm flares up in the southeast Bahamas. Forecasters are nervous. A storm this close to the U.S. leaves little time to prepare if it explodes into a hurricane. The next day, it does just that. Katrina is born. It developed into a minimal hurricane just before it made landfall along the uh, southeast coast of Florida, just to the north of Miami. Surprised residents of Florida's coast watched this Category 1 hurricane rip through their towns, toppling and tossing everything it needs. Katrina leaves 11 people dead. Florida in shock. People need to understand all hurricanes, whether it's a Category 1, Category 3, or Category 5, they all have the potential to take your life if you don't take those storms seriously. There is the brand new one, hot off the press, it's a prelim. At the National Hurricane Center, forecasters know Katrina won't stay a Category 1 for long. It's headed for the Gulf of Mexico, where the waters are not only warmer than usual, a phenomenon called the loop current lies directly in its path. They're some of the warmest waters on Earth. You know, typically, the water there can easily approach 88, 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on the skin of the ocean surface. There is nothing to hold Katrina back. In three days, it swells from a Category 1 hurricane to a Category 4.
And in only nine hours, it makes the final leap to Category 5. The day before it made landfall, it became a very severe Category 5 hurricane. That's almost unheard of anywhere in the world. Uh, but when it's that close to land, it's very unnerving. Not since Hurricane Andrew in 1992 has a Category 5 threatened the United States. And Andrew was a much smaller storm than the massive Katrina. Just because a storm is big does not necessarily mean it's going to be really powerful. But in the case of the Atlantic this year, both big and powerful seem to be the rule for some reason. Uh, uh, Stretching more than 200 miles across, with winds gusting to more than 200 miles an hour, a storm the size of Katrina can actually control weather patterns rather than being steered by them. Few structures, few towns can survive a hit by something this powerful. Least of all, New Orleans, the only city in the U.S. built below sea level. And that's right where the monster is headed. We expect uh, Katrina to make landfall sometime early morning, uh, between 6 and 8 a.m. As the hours till impact count down, the National Weather Service warns the hurricane could cause, quote, human suffering incredible by modern standards. Then, at 6 o'clock Monday morning, August 29th, it hits. New Orleans' worst fears are realized. Even though the storm weakens slightly to a Category 4 just before landfall, the storm's eye passes just to the east of the city. The rain relentless. The storm surge, a record-breaking 30 feet in some areas. The day Katrina slams into the coast, New Orleans levees fail. Water pours into the city. Within hours, 80% of New Orleans is submerged. Those who didn't or couldn't heed the evacuation order become trapped in an unimaginable hell. The city becomes a toxic pool. All along the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi, entire beachfront towns are obliterated. A million people have no place to call home. More than 1,300 are killed. Katrina was not only one of the deadliest uh, and one of the most intense, I'm sure will be the costiest hurricane ever on record in our country. While the Gulf Coast reels from the devastation left by Katrina, another tropical storm is spinning to life. Three weeks after Katrina roared to life in the Bahamas, Tropical Storm Rita follows in its tracks. Forecasters call these storms Bahama Busters. Hurricanes that don't make a long trek across the Atlantic but form quickly and dangerously close to home. There was an incredible amount of extremely warm water concentrated uh, in the Bahamas, and uh, a large cluster of thunderstorms erupted over this warm water. We call this a convective burst, and one of NASA's uh, satellites that measures rainfall from space, the TRIM satellite, actually showed some of those cloud towers going up to as high as 60,000, 65,000 feet. Three days later, Rita ignites into a full-blown hurricane, packing 100-mile-per-hour winds. After lashing the Florida Keys, Hurricane Rita feasts on the simmering waters of the Gulf of Mexico. At the National Hurricane Center, forecasters don't like what they see. Rita, like Katrina, will barrel right into the Gulf's loop current, where the water is not only warm, the heat runs deep. We also had a pretty good idea that the storm was going to intensify further and perhaps become a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, even before it got to the Gulf. Though storm trackers predict Texas will be this storm's final destination, New Orleans holds its breath. It's feared even a moderate storm surge from Rita could overwhelm the city's crippled levees. Once we knew that Rita was going to be an issue, then we started putting measures in place to mitigate the effects. On September 21st, Rita hits the Gulf and suddenly erupts like a storm on steroids. It's now a Category 5 hurricane. The tremendous energy outside of the storm pushes the air up through the eye so quickly the pressure in the center plummets faster in one hour than any other hurricane on record. There's a partial vacuum, and the winds, extreme winds, are trying to 
replace the, the air that's missing because of that partial vacuum. And in general, the lower the pressures, the higher the winds. Rita becomes so powerful that scientists trying to collect data by flying into it have to pull back. One of the hurricane hunter planes, they had so much stress that they had to go home. Oh, that's right. We're not able to predict when a storm is going to rapidly intensify uh, at the rate that Rita did. The, the rapid intensification after it passed by the Keys was remarkable. With sustained 175 mile an hour winds and 230 miles per hour gusts, Rita becomes the biggest, ugliest, and meanest hurricane ever to wander into the Gulf of Mexico. We don't know yet what uh, Rita will do here, but uh, I would expect there to be tremendous storm surge damage uh, and rainfall uh, uh, impacts uh, later on here. With the lessons of Katrina still fresh in everyone's mind, Texas Governor Rick Perry urges coastal residents from Corpus Christi to Boma to evacuate. We're going to get through this because so many of our citizens took this evacuation very seriously. But if Katrina teaches the danger of staying behind, Rita reveals the challenge of quickly moving millions of people away from a vulnerable coastline. Up on Interstate 45 northbound, and this is the backup they're getting stuck in. It is the mother of all traffic jams, trapped. 100 degree heat, cars barely move, if they move at all. With the storm gaining on them, emergency crews must deliver gas to stranded motorists. Okay, you should have at least a half a tank unless you get down the road tomorrow. Landfall is going to occur, it looks like, uh, just before daybreak. This time, Texas dodges a bullet. Instead of hitting a heavily populated area like Houston, Rita tracks northwest toward the sparsely populated Texas-Louisiana border. Do you have anything at all around uh, Cameron, Louisiana? That's probably good that nobody's there. They, uh, I hope there's nobody left there. Rita weakens some over cooler coastal waters, but remains a powerful Category 3 storm when it makes landfall near Port Arthur, Texas. In the end, Rita's storm surge isn't as high as feared. Its powerful winds actually help to flatten the waves and keep the surge at a manageable seven feet for cities like Galveston, which is protected by a seawall. But Rita is such a massive storm, it dumps heavy rains on the vulnerable city of New Orleans. Lake Pontchartrain begins to rise. Nervous engineers pray that temporary dams and repaired levees will hold. There are guys on 17th and London are... Good. Yeah, they're good. But one levee fails at the Industrial Canal. The Ninth War, the impoverished section of New Orleans that flooded with Katrina, begins to fill with water once again. Well, Ninth Ward is flooding, but of course, you know, that is, I'm just looking at rubble behind me. Water is gushing right through the repairs just completed by the Army Corps of Engineers. Over top, it can kind of wash away all the fine material. The engineers scramble to sandbag the breaches. This time, they are prepared moving quickly and efficiently. Though the already beleaguered city must endure another round of drying out, for the most part, New Orleans is spared. In Miami, forecasters are exhausted and a little shell-shocked. It's not every year that you see two record-breaking storms uh, within a few weeks of one another. Words, it turns out, spoken too soon. There is another storm brewing and it will shatter the record as the most intense hurricane the world has ever seen. 